Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Online Presenters, Monday, the 27th of December. This meeting of Online Presenters has now begun. Guests, please note that in order to be a member of our club, you must be a current or former active member of Toastmasters International and have completed at least six speeches from either the traditional or the Pathways programs, or you must have a substantial relevant presentation experience that you can demonstrate in a two to three minute speech delivered on one of our club meetings. All requests for membership are subject to approval by members of our club. If you've not already done so, please change your panel down here and ensure that it shows your name and your role if you have one, right click and select rename to do so. We have members and often guests from many countries throughout the world. Thus, as a professional organization, we ask that you please be aware of language or word usage that may be considered offensive or otherwise insensitive due to cultural differences. Please note that we will be recording the meeting, as you can see up here, and your audio and video contribution may be used for club marketing purposes. Also, please mute your microphone when you are not speaking. Please welcome our club president, all the way from Illinois, DTM, Lewis Brown. Thank you, Mr. Acting Sergeant at Arms. Welcome, fellow Toastmasters. We have a very intimate group here today, but you know what? I sometimes really like the more intimate meetings because we just learn a lot more new things about people as some of you folks out there listening to this recording don't have the benefit of hearing. We shared all that during our little pre-meeting networking event. Anyway, we, I think we have two speeches today. I am one of them. And we will immediately kick off. I don't, let me see if I have any announcements. If I, I know I have some notes somewhere, I'll share them at the end of the meeting as I am actually kind of busy preparing for my own speech a little bit here too. So anyway, with that, let's kick things off with our Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster David Carr. Thank you, Lou. You know, I aspire to some day be a little gadget that you can plug in and it just does things. Because apparently that's the, the best thing that you could be. I, I heard, it, heard it here first. As for Toastmaster of the day, my job is to make this a well-organized meeting. And I have some folks who are going to help me along the way. Donna Knight, are, are you able to serve as timer? I know you had some technical difficulties earlier. And I can't hear you. Donna, I drafted Andy to be timer. Why don't, you, why don't we let Andy be timer and you could be chat monitor? Or, or let's see, actually, what were, what were you going to be, Andy? I think it's. Was it chat monitor? No. Grammarian. You were going to be grammarian. Maybe Donna can be grammarian since she she her connection might drop, <laughs> and we might be better off with with uh, the grammarian being in that position if that should happen. Uh, Mr. Timer, can you tell us a little bit about your duties tonight, uh, Dr. Byrne? Appreciate it, Mr. Toastmaster of the day. The timer is responsible for helping people be reminded of the time allocated for their portion of the speech. We have table topics or impromptu speaking. That is a one to two minute program. Green is at one, yellow is at one thirty, and red is at two. The projects can be if it's an icebreaker, four to six, regular projects are normally five to seven. We'll let each of the speakers let us know how many minutes their speeches are. And lastly, the most important thing that we do is provide feedback to allow individuals the opportunity to grow in their skills. And evaluations are two to three minutes in time duration. All right. Semester of the day. Terrific. We have an eye counter who is here to pick on me. She might have some other duties too. Uh, Pamela, can you explain what the eye counter will be doing this evening? I will be listening to ahs, ums, so's, 
and whatever filler words you might like to use, I will be listening very clear carefully and I will be making a note. I'll be writing it down with my pen and my paper. So watch out. All right, should be checking it twice. Donna stepped in as our grammarian. Donna, are you are you able to get your mic working? And we still don't hear you. Well, we'll come back to you later. You can give your report in the chat if need be. Yeah, okay. Our watcher is Brian David Crawford, EDC. What will the watcher be doing this evening? Aloha, my name is Brian David Crawford. I'm speaking very close to the microphone for dramatic effect because I'll be watching everything you do. I will see everything you do. Turn off the camera if you don't want people to see weeding Jesus. That's my role today. Back to you, David. All right. Our chat monitor is Nick. Nick, Hello, what everybody. does the chat monitor do? What I will be doing and encouraging all of you to do is to enter transitions using words, uh, give opinions, share jokes, share interesting facts. Let's just keep the C word out of the chat today. You know what I mean. And also let's make it uplifting and transformative. Let's make sure that we have a positive chat. And if you want to type when people are speaking, I know some people get upset about this. What I would suggest is you start typing and when the person finishes, hit the send button then. Okay, is that fair enough? Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. All right, cool. Kimmel, I actually had you down as both, both roles, a, chat, a vote counter as well. Is that is that correct? Or are you able to serve in both those roles? I can do that. I signed up and I couldn't see that I signed up. So I thought I didn't sign up. So I, so I can okay. do both. I'm a multitasker. I have a vote All counter. Right. I will count the votes. Okay. I will count the votes and I will give a tally when requested for the votes. I will be, I will be uh, taking the votes for the best speaker, the base, the best table topic or impromptu and the best evaluator. All right, I think we're ready to move on to the formal speeches portion of our meeting. We have two speeches tonight for benefit of our timer. The first speech by Christian will be five to seven. And for the second speech by Lou Brown, Lou has asked for six to eight minutes. So just a little heads up there up front so I don't forget that. Christian is working from the team collaboration path, mastering fundamentals, writing a speech with purpose, which actually is one of the new projects. So it'll be interesting to see how that works. His title is, what are you leaving as a legacy? What are you leaving as a legacy? Christian Ramchurn. Mr. Thurswasser, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for 2022? If yes, just give me a show of hands right now. Raise both hands just to show that you are up for 2022. Well, the Toastmaster is just shaking his hand while everyone, including my watcher, has raised at least one hand. All right. So here's my next question. Have you been asked or have you thought about what is my plan for 2022? What is going to be my inspiration? What are the goals I'm going to have for 2022? You've either been asked one of those questions or you have tried to answer one of those questions or you found the answer to one of those questions. If that's you, just give me a yes. And please unmute yourself and just go crazy with the vocals here. Just give me a yes, I have, Christian. Yes, I have. Yes. Hold on. All right. Yowza. Now, here's a challenging question. As you answered, one of those questions, as you planned or you thought about your 2022, have, did you think about leaving a legacy? Leaving something, anything for the people, the organization, 
whatever you care about. For your fellow Toastmaster, as a member, for your club leaders, as an outgoing club leader, for your own family members. I'll give you an insight why I'm bringing this up. At the end of 2021, this is so crazy. I woke up and I realized I had pieces of real estate, plots of land that were just sitting idle. And I could make good money out of it. Now, the whole reason why they were left dormant, sleeping, producing nothing, except for maybe wild herbs and places where people could dump <laughs> their dumps, is because I was just thinking about myself. I was just so occupied into my Toastmasters activities, my online income streams, my work, mine, mine, mine. But then last month on the 1st of November, I realized that I'm not alone anymore, that I live in a family. One of the reasons I'm doing what I'm doing is because I'm very tempted to say my spouse. Yes, she is a big inspiration, but it's mostly, and I'm so happy she's not listening on this right now. It's mostly because of my children. If, if you're a parent, or you're planning to be a parent, one of the things that you may have gone through is, what do I leave as a legacy to my children? What, what happens when I leave this material world? And we've seen that over the last two years, anything can happen. I can be here today with you on Zoom, and tomorrow you can find out on social media that something happened to Christian. Mm. Deep thoughts, right? On the 28th of December, 2021. What are you leaving as legacy? I don't know. What am I leaving as legacy? I still am trying to figure it out. I know at least those plot of lands, if they're not going to be converted, they're going to be left as legacy. But those are material things. And material things we can always recover. We can always invest in. We can always buy. But one thing that I know for sure I'll never be able to buy back is the time, the energy, those investments that I was able to do. Thank God to COVID because COVID gave me that platform to spend two years at home with my kids. I had time to invest in bringing them up as I wanted to. And as I did not want to, I did not plan to work, have a chat, and then have my kids bulging, my daughter coming in, and my son coming in, let's go play. But I also got time to invest in just having a conversation, improving my storytelling skills, because when you're at home with children, do you know what they want to do? Besides grabbing your mobile devices and looking for YouTube, the best YouTube videos that they think are the best, they want to hear stories from your own past. And that's the legacy I'm leaving. My own past experience as lessons. Where they're coming from, and hopefully they can identify, even though they're young, where they want to go. So here's my question again to you. If you haven't thought about leaving a legacy, what do you want to leave to the people who matter to you, to the people to whom you matter? What do you want to leave to your forthcoming, your future club leaders at the end of June 2022? As you step out as a club leader, as a district leader, what do you want to leave to your fellow Toastmasters as you come to a meeting and then there's a week elapses? I don't know about you, but right now, I hope I'm leaving you with this message that you still have time to work on what you want to leave 
as a lasting impression, as a legacy, as a purpose to the people you care for. So that's my invitation to you. If you haven't done it, think about it. If you've done it, work on it and make sure it happens. On this note, I wish you a successful 2022 and a happy new year. Mr. Tudor Smallston. Thank you, Christian. Our second speaker, who again has requested six to eight minutes for his presentation, asked me to give him a contest style introduction, simple contest style introduction. Join me in welcoming Lou Brown with his story, Wesley. Wesley from Lou Brown. Sorry, point of order, I do need screen share capability, please. Apologize. Should be turned on now. Thank you. Wesley was born in 1956, the oldest of five children. Blonde hair, blue eyes, freckly face, and a very skinny build. He would easily blend in with the cast of Leave it to Beaver. He was a very active child, playing sports, running around, getting into trouble, sometimes getting into accidents, accident prone as they called it back in the day. Sometimes he would run up to ma his mom and say, mom, I'm dizzy, my head hurts. To which his mom would say, Wesley, slow down, take it easy. You're running around making yourself dizzy. Of course, he didn't listen to that. He simply would turn around and go back to running around. One day at home with mom in her living, in the living room and Wesley in his room, there was a loud scream and a bang and then silence. His mom rushed into Wesley's room and found him lying unconscious on the floor next to a metal radiator. It seems he had been jumping on the bed and fell off and hit his head. He was immediately rushed to the hospital to get stitched up and to get tested for potential brain damage. The testing revealed that Wesley had a very large tumor on his brain, the reason for his headaches and his dizzy spells. He was immediately scheduled for emergency surgery. Good news is the surgery was successful. His recovery plan was to him to follow his treatment protocol and get back to a normal life. However, that didn't happen. During the course of that time, Wesley's speech started to slur. He was sometimes off balance and he couldn't even do some simple things like adding one plus one. He, additional testing had revealed that he did indeed suffer permanent brain damage, the worst fears a mother could have. However, it was not due to the brain tumor, but rather the brain surgery. The doctor informed his mom that Wesley would continue to suffer from cognitive decline and physical impairment for the rest of his life. It would only get worse and it would get worse quickly. Of course, neither she nor he wanted to hear that, especially Wesley. He was determined to live life his way. While he could no longer play sports, he could still shoot a basketball, hit a tennis ball, play hide and go seek, ride his bike, albeit with training wheels. Didn't matter to him that he couldn't do a lot of the things the other kids could do. Nor did it bother him when he would hear remarks from some kids he didn't know. Things like, you talk funny, or you walk funny. They would point at him and laugh. Didn't bother him because he was living life his way. As he neared high school, 
it was evident that Wesley was a special needs student who needed perhaps a special needs school. Mm -mm. Neither Wesley nor his mom was having any of that. They requested, indeed demanded, that he take classes, the same classes, and graduate at the same time as his friends, the normal kids. Fortunately, with the help of his teachers, his friends, his mom, his siblings, he completed his coursework and accomplished his goal. Didn't matter that he needed to put in some extra time to do that or that he needed extra tutoring because he was living life his way. Nor did it matter to him when he would hear the occasional phrases from some students he didn't even know, phrases like, why do your hands shake so much? You talk like you got crackers in your mouth, dude. Or man, you walk like you're drunk. What's up with that? Didn't bother him. Upon graduation from high school, he did what every other kid who doesn't go to college does. He got a job. Several, in fact. Mowing lawns, bagging groceries, stocking shelves. Some lasted quite a long time. Others, not so much. Wesley, you've broken too many items this month. I'm sorry, we have to let you go. Wesley, some of the customers feel uncomfortable when you touch their food to put it in the grocery bag. Maybe this job isn't for you. That's okay. He simply left that job and went on to the next one because he was living his life the way he wanted. Eventually, Wesley was no longer able to work anymore. His disorder had caught up with him. He started to lose sensation in his fingers, making it nearly impossible for him to hold a fork or hold a french fry. His legs started to shake uncontrollably to a point where he needed first a walker and then a wheelchair. And his speech became so incomprehensible that it wasn't coherent words or phrases coming out of his mouth with just sounds. Very difficult to understand. It seemed that Wesley was kind of nearing that last chapter of his life. Today, you can find Wesley at home in his room, listening to his favorite music, Foreigner, watching his favorite TV show, wrestling, and eating his favorite food, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Is he unhappy? I'm sure sometimes he is. But very rarely have I ever heard him use a phrase that indicates he regrets any part of his life because he lived his life his way. Wesley is my hero. And Wesley is my brother, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Lou. May we have a timer's report, please? Speaker number two, Lou Brown, seven minutes, 32, seven minutes, 32 seconds. And our first speaker, Christian, was six minutes, 50 seconds, both within their time frames. All right, terrific. All right, well, that was uh, some, some uh, great content to get us started. We're gonna shift gears and move to the impromptu speaking portion of our meeting with our topics master, April Elize. April. Greetings, everyone, my fellow Toastmasters. As this year is coming to a close and we're in this metaphor metamorphosis, this stage of going into 2022. And I typically like to look over this year to look at the different things that I was able to accomplish 
and different things that I was not able to accomplish and things I need to look forward to going into this next year. I don't really set New Year's resolutions because typically I'm like, why well, wait to the beginning of the year? Because typically I never really stick to them anyway. <laughs> Because if I can just <laughs> restart them. But typically what I started doing a few years ago, I kind of start just doing a word of the year or a theme of the year. This year with self-care, my work 2022 is going to be space. So I want to make space for like balancing work, life, religion, and my other side things that I'm doing. So our table topic items, of course, are going to be things focus on a new year to kind of start getting you thinking about the new year. And since you do have a lot of looks like time today, everyone may have a paper topic um, question today. So I appreciate your participation in advance. And I would like to start with you, hopefully um, Bridget, if you're able to participate um, with you first question for you. How do you make your New Year's resolutions? And if you don't make one, if you can just make up one, do you write them down? Do you tell other people your intentions? It's interesting that you said, Madam Table Topics Master, that you typically don't do resolutions. I think I've got ongoing goals. So I think my resolution for this year is not really different than last year's, but it's to continue to improve and uh, reach certain goals when it comes to work, Toastmasters, as well as dancing. Uh, do I write them down? No, I don't, because I think I live them every single day. I would say at this point, they are ingrained in me. I attend Toastmasters meetings, even though today's a day off for me at work. So <laughs> um, I dance pretty much every day, either practicing or lessons. So I'm really trying my best to improve. I would say that Everything that I do is really so ingrained in me that I actually don't write things down. And I usually don't have a sit down conversation with friends saying, oh, these are my New Year's resolutions, because the people that I work with in each of those areas of my life, I think they understand what my goals are. And I, to me, it would be very redundant to share those goals because it's to continue improving and maybe set some different milestones, but they already know what those are. So to me, it would be... <laughs> It's not motivational for me because the, the goals are not very new, but I am very much looking forward to 2022 and uh, reaching further and hopefully accomplishing more than I was able to do in 2021. I made progress and I want to make even more progress, Madam Table Topics Master. Great. I love that ongoing goals. Really love that. So why wait to the new year? You can just do it throughout the year. Really love that. Next question, I'm gonna go to our all counter, Pamela Benjamin. Going into 2022, do you have a good feeling about the future? Are you optimistic or are you pessimistic about the upcoming year? That's a hard one. That's a very, very hard one. I was filling my gas, filling my gas tank yesterday and I thought to myself, my, my. What will the world be in 2022? I don't know. Do we, do we gauge what the future will be based on the price of gasoline? Do we base it based on the groceries? Do we base it on the time we've spent with our family in COVID when so many of us have come home? I think that there's a lot of different ways to evaluate it. I know that for people who have to drive a lot, there's a lot of hardships with the gasoline. But there's a lot, the people who are staying home and working from home, it is not really felt as much. And there we are working on interpersonal relationships. We are not really thinking about the uh, value of crude oil or what that pol policy is. So I would say that my background was in derivatives and there's trends and they would always say make the trend your friend so what trend is upticking in 2022 you want to make that trend your friend and you might have wanted to buy oil stocks a few years ago and you 
may have not thought that you would be so much with your family as much as you've been these last two years. But the last one there is a blessing. And even though it was a bit challenging at times, it's, uh, it's brought great riches to all of our lives. So I think we will have greater interpersonal relationships and with our families, and I think we will all be richer for it. Thanks, Toastmaster Pamela. That was a great point, especially with the gas, because I started going back to work here recently, and I'm now I'm feeling the gas and tunnel tolls that I was not paying before when I was just having to walk 15 seconds to my office. So definitely agree with that. Next question I have for Toastmaster Andrew Byrne. Which year has been the best of your life thus far and what made it so good? Okay. What year has been the best of your years thus far and what has made it so good? If you can think of one. Uh, Hopefully there's many to choose from, of course. <laughs> Yeah, uh, let me just get my timer stuff ready. All right. Okay, thank you very much, Toast uh, Table Topic Master of the Day. The best year of my life, I believe, was 1979. And that was the year when my son was born. It was first my two children, but being a first time father and that really was overwhelmingly positive. And even though I didn't have a lot of time because I was working in medicine some 60 to 80 hours a week, uh, the joy of, of raising a child uh, is without words, the most enjoyable thing in my life. And it's brought me great joy in terms of mentoring uh, the child, my son, uh, to where he is today and also my daughter. So it was, I would say that the years were when he was born, when my daughter was born, and also the year that I got married, 1975, because without that event, the other two wouldn't have taken place. So those are the initial impression of, of what I would say. Now, one can look at a multitude of things that happen in your lifetime and to pick on one or two moments within a year's uh, time frame is really hard to to focus in on because every day is a blessing every day that you're awake and your eyes open up and you're above ground as opposed to below ground is a good day to be happy so i think that everyone has their own impressions of what makes them happy family makes me happy and the ability to you know be now in my 30 43rd year of marriage with two children and grandchildren is a very happy time thank you very much Toastmaster of the day that's amazing 43 years of marriage that's awesome <laughs> It and you're, you're right, old. every day is a blessing. <laughs> it just means you're old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question is for our DJ Nick, if he's still there. And hopefully he can do this without using our the C word, or hopefully it's not the same C word he was mentioning earlier. Um, what is the biggest challenge facing humanity? Do you think the next year would bring us closer to solving this problem? <laughs> I think my approach to world problems since March of 2020 is for us to focus on ourselves and, and one at a time, get our, get our own lives in order. I think that... Um, and that's challenging enough, by the way. We don't get paid the gazillions to go and make uh, decisions about uh, let's stop people meeting, lock, let's lock down people, and then at the same time going to have, actually go and have a party downstairs in the office, that kind of thing. You know, that's, we, that's the kind of stuff that goes on in the British government. 
we don't get paid the gazillions for that. So therefore, maybe I, for once, it's actually way above my pay grade on this. I think, though, one of the key things that I learned from this and one of the th things that I teach to many people is we can influence change and it's one person at a time. Now, that could all be, you know, that could take a week for one person or it could be one person at a time during when you're speaking for one hour. So you can have a lot of impact and you could have a thousand people in a room, but it has to be one person at a time because ultimately our arguments, our, uh, the skills that we have here, we practice here, but also what our thoughts, our political or social or you know, whatever the thoughts are that we want to convey. We have to connect with each person, and especially in this day and age, connecting one-on-one -on -one with, through people's eye contact, directly like this, straight into their heart. And this is a really powerful skill and device that we have at our disposal now. We didn't really have it before. I can look at you and look directly into your heart and in your soul and give you a message. And if it's strong enough, and if I deliver it well enough, I have a very, very good chance that I could actually change what you do or feel or think one at a time. That's the way to make a change. And then let's just see how it goes with <laughs> the seven billion, the other seven billion, right? Back to you, Madam Talk Master. Thank you. That was powerful. <laughs> okay, next question, a little lighter. This question, I'm going to bring it to, let's see, Lou Brown. What special foods do you associate with the end of, in or beginning of the year, or the beginning of the new year? Any special foods that you're eating around this time of the year? Actually, no, <laughs> Madam Topics Master. It's funny. Years ago, I would have said yes, because years ago, I kind of operated in that mode that many people do where you're very aware of the time of year because of, especially when you work for someone else, of those vacation times, the holidays, et cetera, things like that. And especially year end, because you have year end reviews and year end projects wrapping up, then you're thinking about the next year. Well, as I believe Pamela pointed out, there's a New Year's resolution aspect to that. So they're all kind of tied together. I think it becomes ingrained in our brain. Now that I haven't been working for someone else for several years now, time just seems irrelevant. Sometimes I'm like, well, what day is it? What month is it? Oh my goodness, we have a Toastmaster meeting tonight. It's like all over the place. It's amazing. With that said, I've already moved toward a place of being more healthy, doing, I guess, things, uh, more desired habits, healthy habits, things that I want to do for myself to live a healthier lifestyle. What that means is both for my food and my diet and my physical exercise, I've already been doing it right along the way. So there won't be anything I'll be changing about my diet or my exercise. Of course, around this time, there are going to be situations where I'll have a little bit of pie, a little bit of chocolate, a little bit of some extra things. But even when I do, I don't kill myself over it. I'm looking for the timers. I, mean. I, <laughs> I don't kill myself over it because you know what? I, one of the aspects of having a healthier lifestyle is also having self-compassion, self-care, and knowing that, you know what? It's okay to have something that we enjoy now and then. Just don't make a let that bad habit slip back in. Back to you, Madam <laughs> Table Topics Master. I love it with the healthy habits. I uh, agree with who said they uh, found the weight that Graham had lost because I'm with them. I feel like I found that weight as well. My husband got me an Apple Watch and it keeps bugging me about moving more. And I'm just like, I don't want to move more. <laughs> I just want to take it all for it. Told me to get active. I'm like, I don't want to get active, but I know I need to. So that's giving me inspiration. Now on for our general evaluator. The next question I have for you is, what are your plans for New Year's Eve? Will you spend it with anyone special, family or friends? Uh, 
On this New, Year e New Year's Eve, I'm going to spend with my parents because I've been on the COVID lockdown for almost two years now. The last time I stepped out of this house was in February, 20, uh, February 22nd, 2020. I've been staying in the house for almost two years, never stepped out unless it was very necessary. But like what Chris mentioned in his speech, because of this COVID lockdown, I got a lot of time to invest in my family. And after this New Year's Eve, very, there's a high chance that I'm gonna leave my hometown, get to another city, start my new career. This is a, new, uh, this is a transition time for me. So I will take this time to spend the New Year's Eve with my family there might not be anything very special that I would do with my parents. Just a little chat, just sitting together, talking about the past, talking about the future, talking about our plans in 2022. And above all, tell them that I love them, mommy and daddy, back to Toastmaster. Oh, that is so sweet. Well, enjoy your time with your family and good luck on your new transition to your new career. Next question I have for BDC. I'm going to tie yours in with your new Christmas present. What are your plans for the year ahead with your new Christmas present with your new fancy microphone? Any special new plans with that? Spinkly new microphone that you have. I'm not really technological and fair. <laughs> so I, I'm a firm believer in the concept that you always need to be stepping outside your comfort zone. You always need to be willing trying something new. So when I think about my growth as an online communicator, whether it's here in Toastmasters, work purposes, or on Twitch, uh, I think about the microphones I've had over the years. You know, my first microphone was a, a very basic low end. USB microphone. And that worked out pretty good, but I, I recognize there are limitations to it. It sounded best when it was right up against your mouth like this. So you couldn't see my mouth, but you could hear me talk like this. And I didn't like that because I felt like, you know, when you're watching me, you didn't, you were seeing a microphone and you didn't get to see this beautiful face. I know it's really a heartbreaking moment for you guys. So I moved on to a lavalier microphone. Those are one of those little pin ones that you see right here on the chest. And that worked great too. It was a lot of fun. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think I sounded good. You got to see this, but I kept thinking about what's that next step, the next evolution. Cause I honestly think that Toastmasters at its core is about stepping outside your comfort zone. And when you become comfortable doing something, you have to ask yourself, what is that next step? And so when I think about how freeing the lavalier microphone was, I suddenly was not tied to a microphone on an arm or anything like that. I could just talk and move around. But if I ever wanted to change how my voice was talking, I, I kind of have to do this and it looks stupid. This microphone now, it's, you know, a good distance away from me. It's not in my shot, but if I need to get real close to you, I can do that. And that's why I went with this microphone, because I feel like this is going to help me grow as a leader, grow as a communicator, and really think about how can you use a microphone effectively from a vocal variety standpoint, and not just, I'm going to talk real fast right now. Back to you, Table Topics Master April. The sound quality is amazing. It sounds professional, like a professional, like podcaster, like just professional. <laughs> it's superb. Toastmaster of the day, how are we doing with time? Because I know on the agenda it has that it ends at 8.37 for Topics Master. I wasn't sure if you wanted me to continue or if you wanted me to wrap it up. You know, we, we could always show some mercy and wrap up early. There's no sin okay. in that, but but you you can you can pick a couple more victims, okay. <laughs> two even three more, okay. And, uh, then we'll move along. Okay, we'll do. Okay, next question. We will go with Christian. How do you celebrate New Year? Is it usually a family celebration or more of a party with friends? And you can talk about prior to situation of what's going on right now. I don't want to say the word to mess with our algorithms. 
So would you believe it, Madam Table Topics Master, that I was a potty animal before I got married? <laughs> so New Year for me would be always out of the house and coming back home at five in the morning, seven in the morning. And one time uh, we were so drunk. It took us like, I, and I was a driving. So the guy who was driving took like two hours to do a trip, which usually takes five minutes because he was just missing all the roads. He was just going round and round. Um, lesson I, I learned there is uh, drinking is not good when you're going to drive and party on the on New Year. But uh, that was not when I was younger, but when I was wild and I wasn't focused and I wasn't a father and I definitely wasn't married. And I mean, I'm thinking if I, if I would say that to my wife, my home minister, I'm going to go out for the New Year and come, coming back at five in the morning. So tell me one thing, don't come back. And Next time you come back, just sign on the divorce papers. Uh, yeah, I know that well. Uh, but nowadays, it's just a family thing. It's just getting together with uh, the home minister, definitely. You can't, you can't live her out of it. Um, the kids. The kids. And it's cooking. I'm the one who's cooking when it's the weekend. So in the new year, I'm going to be responsible for cooking and cleaning and everything. Uh, you know why I cook? Because I can spend like hours in the kitchen by myself listening to my audio listening to my music of choice and everyone thinks i'm busy cooking i'm cooking yes but i'm enjoying myself so there i let that cat out of the box so don't share it with anyone outside of this meeting but yeah it's cooking spending time with the family watching a movie which everyone can agree to watching because there's four of us with four different tastes uh so yeah that's new year and spending time alone with the people I love and I hope they love you back. Back to you, Madam Table Topics Master. Nice seeing your metamorphosis of what happened throughout your, your years. <laughs> Next question. I guess that would be our last question. Of, actually, I guess two more questions. So next to last question, this one would be for Graham and then our last question would be for Jim Barber. So um, Graham, for 2021, can you share some highlights from this past year or this year before it wraps up to share a highlight with us? 2021, Madam Topics Master, has been an interesting year. Like everybody, I've been affected by the restrictions that we've had to face with the C word. I gave up working full time a few years ago, specifically so that my wife and I could travel. Well, that's worked really well for the last year and a half or so. In fact, the biggest disappointment in 2021 has been the fact that we have not been able to travel to the United States. It's not because I love you all in the US, although I do. I mean, you're all such nice people. It's because my daughter lives in Portland, Oregon, and we just haven't had a chance to get over and, and spend some time with it. But I got to say, this technology here, this Zoom that we're using, or in the case of Skype, has made it at least possible for us to chat for an hour or two every week. We just sit and we have a chat. And so I can't remember who it was earlier was talking about I think it might have been Lou talking about the technology that we now have, which allows us to do this. And so I'm actually really quite grateful for 2021 for giving me that opportunity. The higher, you know, the, the, the rear vision view of 2020, you know, we all have 2020 vision looking back. That seems much better than it was, I suspect. 2021 has been an interesting year. And I think that the same will be true of 2022. But I actually have, and it's not a New Year's resolution so much, but I do have a plan. I'm losing weight, as mentioned, and I'm getting my blood sugars down, and I'm really pleased about that. So food is obviously important to me. I'm actually going out and buying cans of vegetables, canned beans, canned carrots. But most importantly, I'm going out and getting all sorts of canned peas. And I'm putting those peas into a sort of basket, the sort of basket that fishermen use. And I'm whirling those peas around my head constantly because if I have one thing that I really want to see 
in 2022, it's world peace. Madam Topics Master. <laughs> I was wondering where that was going. <laughs> okay. Last but not least, for Jim Barber, can you share with us a goal that you would like to share um, for this past year or any type of resolution that you were able to achieve for 2021? to wrap oh, up our table topics for tonight. Our today. Thank you, Madam Get Topics Master, for giving me the opportunity to follow world peas. Oh my goodness. Resolutions that I make, I don't make New Year's resolutions. I find that I frequent, if I don't make them, I, I get frustrated, I get upset, I get disappointed. And on those times that I do make them, I, fe I feel kind of proud of them. And I'm trying to tone down my pride and, and develop a little more humility. So the, the New Year's resolutions thing just doesn't really work for me. But I do set goals and I, or in, in the general sense, and I do kind of have ongoing things that I'm trying to do. I have, as a matter of fact, I'll brag a little bit, I lost 10 pounds this past year. Not a lot, but that's for me, that was pretty darn good. And I, I am the lightest that I've been in the last, I would say, 40 years. Uh, this next year, oh, I don't know. I've got all kinds of things that I want to accomplish. But I would say, if anything, that I really want to do, it is to... If I, if I had to pick one thing, it would be to outpun Graham Cairns. And if I could do that, I will feel that it's been a good year and that's what I'm going to strive to do. Madam Topics Master. <laughs> well, thanks everyone for participating. I hope that 2022 brings everyone happiness and everyone's able to reach new goals, new pathways, new journeys, new speeches. And this concludes our table topics and going to turn the meeting over to our general evaluator, Irvin Young. Well, Thanks everyone. Before you do that, we, I believe we heard from our timer along the way, correct me if I'm oh, wrong, yeah. Andy, but I believe everybody was within time. And that means you can vote for almost everybody that you see on the screen, except for me, April, and Donna, I think. Five. And uh, Blue Sky Timer also did not get a table topics. Yep. Graham tried really hard to go over. I was having sound difficulties. But, yeah. Uh, Graham tried really hard to go over, but he got to World Peas at uh, 226. Yeah. A vote for any of the above. And yes, we do need to hear now from our general evaluator to bring us home. Irvlin Young. Today we have a team of experienced speakers comprised of two DTMs, Distinguished Toastmasters, and a team of veteran evaluators also comprised of DTMs, dynamic and thoughtful mentors who are themselves great, really great speakers. Without further ado, I would like to invite Graham Cairns to evaluate Chris Rumchum's speech, What Are You Leaving as Legacy? Your, the stage is yours, Graham. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator, Toastmasters, friends. The interesting thing about this speech is that it is something that most of us haven't seen delivered because it is a brand new level one project. And that is, it's a return to the old, please create a speech with purpose. And what, the first question that I am asked as an evaluator is the speech purpose statement. And I said that, uh, Christian, it seems to me that the purpose of the speech was to encourage us to reset our goals for 22 and consider what we will leave behind in our clubs, in our businesses, in our families. Let me begin, begin by saying I believe that you achieved that purpose. The use of rhetorical questions, getting us involved is a useful technique, and particularly in an environment like this, 
reinforcing what the reaction has been, saying, yes, I see there have been a whole lot of hands have gone up, or I noticed that the majority of you have said this. And so that's a really useful technique. Well done on getting our attention. I also loved your stories of the challenges and the triumphs of, for example, having the kids around while you are in the middle of changing, of metamorphosizing, metamorphosizing into something completely different due to COVID. One of the things that the Christian did was let me said, let me give you an example. And then he went into the example. Can I suggest a more effective technique is instead of saying, let me give you an example, or here is an example, just go into the example and say, now I'm talking about this because it's an example. So begin with the story, then tell us why you're telling us the story, because those stories are important. And I thought the stories were really good. Launch straight into them. Now, I was a little confused because Christian spoke about the introduction or he introduced the concept of, I have a whole lot of scattered properties which are currently not being used for anything. Uh, people dump their rubbish on them or whatever. Now, if that was meant to be analogy, we never got back to that allegory. Or if there are in fact a whole lot of plots of land which you own all over the, um, uh, the island, then that would be a different matter. But be, there's a thing called Chekhov's rifle, the principle that you should never introduce something unless you're actually going to use it later in the play. So if you have a gun on the table in the first act, you have to have it fired by the second. You introduced something and then never referred to it again. And I kept wondering, OK, is he going to get back to those scattered properties or were they allegory? So. That would be my biggest single suggestion. I also felt that the speech didn't flow as well as it might. We started with the rhetorical questions. And then in the second act, we got to the story of the kids coming in and interrupting, but that's still worthwhile because it gave, it was something. But there was a point between those, that introduction and those stories that it just sort of, metamorphosized into you know and and nobody wants to actually see a moth uh as it's in that pupae stage so please try to look at transitions and make them a little stronger but having said that i really liked the call to action which was at the end and i liked the stories that you were telling us and you made us think which i think was as i say the purpose of this speech madam general evaluator or Mr. General Evaluator, whoever our General Evaluator is. Thank, you. Yeah, no. I think, <laughs> thank you, Graham. I think you are really a master of vivid description, both in your table topic speeches and your evaluation, as well as your prepared speech. You can always tailor your words in a way that appeal to senses. So whatever you say, it makes me, you know, produce mental images instantly so that I feel as if there is a movie playing in front of me. That's really great. And your evaluation is definitely a valuable legacy for online presenters. Now let's move on to Jim Barber, our second evaluator for Lewis Brown and his speech, Wesley. Jim, the stage is yours. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator, my fellow Toastmasters, and of course, especially Toastmaster Lou Brown. Lou, you indicated that this was a prototype, a, a rough version of a contest speech. It's also a Pathways project. And so basically, I'm going to be trying to evaluate this as a Pathways project, as a contest speech. And you indicated you weren't sure if this was going to be a video contest speech or an online presentation speech. So I can tell you up front, my evaluation is going to be a little bit rough. Bear with me. Let me summarize your, let me evaluate your speech in one word. Wow. Now, let me go into a little more detail. Wow, wow, wow. This was a powerful presentation. One of the best that I've heard you give. In fact, I would say one of the best that I've heard here at the club. You should definitely consider this as a contest speech. It is terrific. Specifically, you, this, this was powerful. It was well delivered. 
In terms of your vocals, I would say everything was top notch. Your, your use of the pause, your, your vocal variety, everything worked. Now let's go to visual, and that's going to vary depending upon whether you're talking in person or you're doing it online. And I'm going to assume that it's a video presentation because that's what I saw here. And again, every most everything was top notch there as well. Your lighting is great. You're centered in the video frame. Your eye contact with the audience was terrific. Everything worked. I have three small suggestions and I recognize this was rough. And so I'm not picking on, I'm not saying what you should have done. This is simply how to make it a little bit better so that when you take it to the contest, you will knock it out of the park. The first thing is you opened with a picture of Wesley and that was the only thing on the screen. I, and you know how my feeling on that, you are the star. And so I would prefer to keep you on the screen and have Wesley as an alternate, kind of like I have my jumping man over here. So add that to the picture of you, but don't let you move away from the screen because you're the star. The second thing is to, you, you used good gestures, but your gestures were a little low. They were down here. And for example, when you talked about normal kids, you need to bring it up here and do your air quotes, normal kids. But again, that's a minor little thing. Third little thing, the, you, I loved your closing. Your closing was great. I would like to see you close with a picture of Wesley again. You showed him to us at the beginning. You referred to him all the way through. I would like to have seen a picture of him again beside you, keep you on the screen, but I'd like to see a picture of him at the end just so we can bond with him again. But this is a terrific Pathways project. This is going to be a terrific contest speech, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you're going to do with it. Madam General Evaluator. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Jim Barber from the sunny side of Florida is a great source of positive energy. Your vocal variety, your sweet voice, and your body language, facial expressions is like the sunshine of the Florida beach. Uh, as soon as you start speaking, it can always enhance our feelings of positivity and empowerment. It sort of awakens us from those and daydreams. Thank you again, Jim. Now, shall I move on to the functional role takers? Shall I invite Donna Knight, the grammarian, to deliver her report now? That would be good. Let's uh, just get the timers report. We kind of got it in the chat. Oh, yeah. Right. And so I guess we, we basically essentially know that uh, Jim Bar Barber qualified and Graham went a little bit over, so. Jim wins. Uh, no need for a vote there. And uh, Rivlin, please, yes, take it away with the, uh, the rest of the reports. Yep. Now let's move on to the functional role takers. Shall I invite Donna Knight to deliver her grammarian report? Do you still experience technical difficulty? Oh yeah, right. So shall we skip it, David? Uh, Donna, Let's maybe move on post a few notes in the chat and uh, we'll move on to the next report. Okay. So now let's invite our ACH counter, Pamela Benjamin, to deliver her ACH counter report. It was a very scarce, scarce evening for Oz till it, all of a sudden we hit a speed bump. Graham had two, Dr. Andy had two, and Bridget had four. We had elongated ands by Christian and David. He stretched it out for a long time. Thank you. That's my report. Thanks, Pamela. Thanks for your conscientious calculation. Now let's move on to our watcher, the Stream Deck the hardcore fan, Brian David Crawford. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, so the most important thing I think about when we talk about the role of the watcher is to look at y'all, watch you guys. Uh, I can care less about the speakers, the evaluators. I want to watch what everyone's doing in their screens, how they're using it. The first thing I want to say, I loved everyone's use of turning their cameras off. That is so nice that you guys did that. Uh, in streaming, we call it chair hype when we see an empty chair. So I have no chair hype to give out today. 
But the really thing that I think is interesting is of the 13 people we have here, 11 of us were using virtual backgrounds or a modification of our backgrounds to hide the things behind us. And I want to stress the most important thing to know about a virtual background. Understand why you're using it. What is the purpose of your virtual background? Why are you using it? Are you trying to hide something? Do you want to express something? It is always good to think about your virtual background as an extension of what you're presenting. Why you're presenting it, how you're presenting it, how it goes to fits. No one's was terrible, but I'm just saying, think about why you want to use this and ask yourself if this is the right tool that you want to use. Thank you, Brian. That's a great point. And last but not least, uh, we still have two role takers, chat monitor, Nick Lacani, which you, uh, the, state, the stage is yours, Nick. Thank you very much. Uh, we had lots of things going on in the chat. In my private chat, I had the normal, I love you, I love you, but that was self-talk. That was self, you know, I was talking to myself. Uh, there was also the talk about the cricket that, you know, I was talking to an Australian about. So if you know any Australians in the chat, you know that uh, we were talking a little bit of cricket. But however, we had in the proper chat, we had transitions and metamorphosis shared with us. We had lots of information about films and movies. So for example, how is BDC already on Thursday? Well, obviously he's, he's watching The Matrix. We had Spider-Man and other movies and shows online as well. And uh, we had Pamela explaining to us that she's just come out the pool. And Christian came up with, I think you've forgotten to take your Cap, swimming cap off, Pamela. Whoa, hilarity, more jokes. Why did the chicken, uh, Pamela said, why did the chicken and the Toastmaster cross the road? To go to a meeting or to get from one path to another? That was from Christian and Jim. Any others, put them in. We also had world peas. All right, so well done. And in terms of topics, we we're talking about financial and math derivatives. Wonderful stuff. But what I loved was the fact that David Carr's Galaxy Watch praises him for walking to the refrigerator to get another snack. Uh, finally, uh, we all went, wow, well, I know I did. Uh, Irvlin's house arrest, uh, which is longer than a lot of bank robbers get, I believe. However, with the chat, I think what I probably did was I shot myself in the foot. I not encouraging people to, to type. I think in this club, we should be able to type at any time. Over to you, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Thanks for all of your humor. And actually, Nick started a lot of, initiated a lot of conversation in our chat columns. And he played really nice music before the meeting began. I actually came in pretty pessimistic about 2022 today. And I believe I will walk away from this meeting feeling very optimistic. Thank you, Nick. And last but not least is timer, Andy Byrne. Over to you, Andy. Uh, my timer report was listed as we were going along to conserve on time. If anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. But all the information is out in the chat for you all. Thank you. I think uh, I finished my job today. Back to over to our Toastmaster of the day, David. All right. Well, I think that means it's time to hear from our vote counter about who the winners might be for the evening. The speaker contest was a very close race. Lou Brown took the prize tonight. And table topics. We had a lot of people in the race, and it was close. But Mr. World Peas won the race. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Well, I think that completes my metamorphosis from Toastmaster of the Day to just a member of the club which means I need to toss it back to our president, Lou Brown. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster of the day, fellow Toastmasters. Yes, this was a, um, I like how some folks use different variations of the word metamorphosizing. I think Graham used, um, it was sort of like a verb. <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, yes, great. Meet. Before I go any further, I would like to share my screen because in Jim's evaluation, he mentioned about the after or the today picture of Wesley. And I thought I was sharing my screen. And I'm usually pretty good about recognizing whether or not that's the case. So what I would like to do, if you all will oblige me, is to do that. And hopefully you will see today's pick. And also, if you don't see it, let me know. Okay, do you see my screen? Okay, wonderful. Before, whoops. And that is Wesley today. Okay. See both pictures now. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Andy. As far as announcements, I believe D47 is having their next Toastmasters Leadership Institute workshop January 15th. Can David, Andy, or anyone else in D47 proper? Yes, at 1 o'clock. And they're actually having trainings every weekend for the month of January. Oh, wow. Okay, great. I'm sure all of that is at the D47 website. And of course, everyone knows that it's not just for officers or be, at least I think there's going to be other workshops too. There used to be in the past, but uh, for workshops for everyone. So check that out at the D47 website. I have no other announcements other than to say thank you all for being here. It was great seeing all of you. I hope you had a wonderful holiday. And it is the holiday season. I think I had seen somewhere on Facebook where about the whole happy holidays versus Merry Christmas argument. And the fact that I guess the holiday season spans from like beginning of November to sometime end of January proper. And, and they and they rattled off about 30 holidays. I was like, holy cow. Uh, so anyway, happy holidays to everyone. Merry Christmas to those who celebrate that. Happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, et cetera. Uh, and I know Andy Meets would like to start filling the uh, agenda for next week. And my last bit of, I guess, comment would just be, and happy new year to all of you. Take it away, Andy. Great. Uh, stay tuned because the executive board will be discussing what kind of contests we're gonna be having as we move into the new year. We'd like to encourage everybody to set their strategic goals and identify whether they need a mentor or want to be a mentor for other members in the club. And lastly, we want you all to focus in on what your goals are and how you can move forward in the new year. Uh, Lou's already mentioned the training that exists in District 47 as an example, but they exist in many other districts as well. We can post that. But I want to call special attention to what David has done in terms of posting Nick's Zoom uh, activity on the web page and having those other educational programs that we've had. I spent a good portion of today going through some of them, and they're excellent. So thank you, David, for doing what you do. And I recommend everyone do those kinds of things. But we can't have a meeting unless we have some people volunteering for different roles. First role, most important one, is the Toastmaster of the Day, which is a ceremonial leader, master of ceremonies. Who's going to step up of those that are here to do that role? 